Ahoy there makers, let's take a closer look at the Interstate 75W. Okay, so let's have a look at this new update to the Interstate 75. So the Interstate 75 is an all-in-one Raspberry Pi Pico W powered controller for Hub 75 LED matrix panels. It plugs neatly into the back of the LED panel, just pushes in very, very simply. You can only go one way around as well. And because it's a Pico W board, you get all the information at your fingertips from the internet. So you can get all kinds of information and put it onto your display wirelessly. The i75W is powered by the Pico W's micro USB port, which should be more than enough power to power a number of connected panels, assuming that you're not going to do anything that's too eye bleedingly bright. And there's also two useful buttons on it as well, which is one extra button than the previous model. So you've got a A and B on there. Let's have a look at some of the other features as well. So we've also popped on the back there a Quest connector, which is the quick Stemma QT connector. So you can add all kinds of extra sensors to your display as well. So there's so many things that you can do with this. For example, you could tap into an API for bus or train times or airline times and have that scrolling across a huge display. You can generate some really bold graphs and have a show the air quality or other sensor readings. And you can also create some ad hoc, easily adjustable signage for your classroom, your maker stall or your kebab shop. <laughs> Helen, what are you writing here with this? And you can also scroll some greetings to your crew, just like in the old days. So let's have a look at some more features. So as we said at the beginning, this has got a Raspberry Pi uh, Pico W aboard. So that means it's been soldered to the back of the board and therefore it's powered by the RP2040 dual ARM Cortex M0 Plus running at 133 megahertz with 264K of SRAM. It has two megs of QSPI flash for supporting XIP. It's powered and programmable by a USB micro B connector. It has 2.4 gigahertz wireless on there so you can connect to your Wi-Fi network. And it's got some really sturdy screw terminals as well for connecting in the LED panels and powering them. It has the Quest connector that we talked about uh, earlier, so you can bring all kinds of extra sensors and things to this. It's got two user programmable buttons, A and B. It has the Captain Reset reset button on there, which is really, really useful. And it also has a, an onboard RGB LED as well, which can help if you're debugging or you just want an extra LED and you haven't got enough on the panel already. It comes fully assembled, so there's absolutely no soldering required. It measures 64.3 by 40 by 18 millimeters and it comes with C++ and MicroPython libraries as well. And there's also going to be a schematic coming soon. So it doesn't come with an LED panel. If you want to get a panel or any of the cables, they're sold separately. We can also check them out in the store below as well. So let's check out some of the software as well. So this comes with our own C++ and MicroPython library support for the Interstate 75. And that means if you want to get the best performance out of the panel, then you probably want to program in C++. But if you're a beginner, we recommend that you use our batteries included in MicroPython, um, which has been designed to be really easy uh, to use and also to help you get started quicker. So Hub 75 module lets you draw individual pixels on the matrices using the RP2040's uh, programmable I.O. and DMA, and that minimizes the CPU usage so you can maximize these luscious 10-bit gamma corrected color depth. Alternatively, you can draw your own LED pixels using the Pico Graphics Library. Um, so this enables you to have some convenient functions for displaying text and shapes and provides um, chaining of panels as well. And we've even got some really simple examples to get you started too. Please note though, if you're going to chain the panels together, Pico Graphics currently only supports these current arrangements of matrices panels. So 32 by 32, 64 by 32, 96 by 32, 108 by 32. 64 by 64, 128 by 64, 192 by 64, and 256 by 64. So if you want to connect up additional modules, we have a whole range of breakout garden sensors that you can connect in using this Quest connector, this quick STEMI QT connector. All you'll need is a JST-SH to JST-SH cable. We sell those in the store as well if you want to pick up a couple of those. And they use I2C to connect to the breakout garden. So very, very simple. And there's a whole Python library uh, for each one of these modules. If you want to find out which breakouts are currently compatible with our C++ and MicroPython libraries, then check out the, the recent release notes. So about the Pico W aboard, some things to note, our new Pico W aboard products come with a Raspberry Pi Pico W aboard the board. <laughs> this means you can take advantage of the RP2040's microcontroller. It's a really speedy dual core ARM processor. It's got a dynamic growing ecosystem, a choice of different programming languages to experiment with as well. And more excitingly, the Pico W has wireless connectivity. So you can connect to all kinds of uh, devices, other devices over the internet and your local area network too. So let's have a look at a demo, shall we? Okay, let's get over to the captain's table. 
Okay, I'm over here on the captain's table and I have the, uh, the really nice display here. This is a 75 module. I've got the 64 by 64 version here and I'm just running the clock demo program. So uh, this will change the, uh, the time based on the current time that it can grab from uh, an internet time server and it will also change the sort of colors as well on there. So this is the, the basic clock program. Uh, I'll show you a ball demo now. This is quite a nice one to show off the uh, the dynamic range and the uh, the speed of the display as well. Um, so you can see there the uh, the balls are sort of bouncing around quite nicely there, and they overlap and so on. And this is using the Pico Graphics library uh, as well. Now there's uh, something if you haven't played with cheer lights, this is something you definitely need to look into soon. So cheer lights, um, what this will do is each time somebody tweets out hashtag cheer lights and then a color, it will update one of the pixels on the display. And each time it uh, refreshes, it will update the next pixel. So over time, you'll see all the different colors that people have been uh, tweeting out. Uh, another version of this, which I've just quickly knocked together, is just a full panel version of this. So whatever the current color is, uh, the, the flicker in there is just the uh, the refresh rate of the uh, the lights in the studio and the camera. Uh, this is an absolutely solid display as I'm looking at it uh, in person. And um, yes, whatever the current color is, that's what this will change to. Uh, we've looked at the clock one. Let's put that one back on. So this one displays the current time and uh, you've got this nice sort of gradient either side as well. And it centers it exactly in the middle of the display. So if I just move the display down there, you can see it's right in the middle of the display. And finally, let's look at rainbow. This is uh, another nice thing to show off all the different colors. Um, and you can see there you've got all the nice yellows and greens and so on. Uh, throughout the display. Okay, so it's very, very easy to program. If you look at some of the code here, we're simply just using the Pico graphics library. Uh, we're grabbing whatever the width and the height is, so it's compatible with all kinds of different display sizes. And then we're basically just starting the program. Uh, this particular one, um, the rainbow one, is just doing some uh, hue saturation value conversions to RGB um, or from the hex values from, um, for example, if you're doing cheer lights, you'll get hex hex value for the color. And then what on here we have is we have some draw functions. If you've ever seen this MicroPython native, that's a way of really speeding up your MicroPython code. That's a, a bit of an advanced uh, piece of code there. And we've got some animations going on as well. And simply it just animates and changes. You can see this display is ever so slightly sort of moving across the colors. That kind of swirly effect is just a, an artifact of the camera again. In, in real life, this looks very, very solid. So if I hold up this screen to the uh, um, the camera there, you can see how nice those colors look there. And then on the back of the display, you can see there, there's the Interstate 75 with a Pico W board. And it simply just plugs in using those two connectors there and then onto the board itself. So if you like these kinds of uh, electronics projects, maker projects, you might also want to consider uh, giving me a follow on uh, YouTube as well. I've got my own YouTube channel. Quite recently, I did one with using the Galactic Unicorn from Pimeroni, and I made a Guitar Hero game with that using the five buttons underneath as well. So if you like robots, electronics, maker stuff like that, then you definitely want to check out my channel. So thanks for watching, and I shall see you next time.